सो वन सेकेंड ना हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द प्रोजेक्ट पेलविस केस डिस्कशन सीरीज नंबर फोर uh the previous three case discussions have garnered a lot of interest and after being telecasted on youtube there are almost 2000 to 3000 views for each and every case just giving us a idea that people are interested in discussing simple cases what is happening in the clinics on a day to day basis so uh, we will start off we'll uh, like to thank dr shilpa gb from bangalore to grace uh, this group and uh, give her uh, uh, expert uh, guidance and comments on this so jay uh, i'll start the case straight away without much time this is a case of a lady 32 year old who underwent laparoscopic myomectomy a large 10 cm fibroid was removed from the anterior wall of the uterus it was a solitary fibroid she basically wanted fertility treatment and on ultrasound fibroid was detected so the surgery was done and the problem is that she came with pain in abdomen and not able to pass urine after surgery on day 1 how common do you think this is have you seen across in your practice such a thing yeah i mean this is basically pain abdomen on the first surgical day it's either going to be related to laparoscopy right due to the pain of the port, putting the ports inside or it can be related to to ga gaseous distension second most common and third you rule out urological causes where bladder distension is the most common cause you know that patient unable to pass urine so these three are the most common causes to have pain abdomen on the first post operative day of the patient so how to investigate this what what is the cause of pain should we do an ultrasound a ct scan a x ray abdomen irrec what all should be no. done no 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 just palpate the abdomen if you palpate the abdomen and if it is a distended bladder you will be able to palpate the bladder provided the patient is a little thin let's assume she is a little obese patient having tenderness there not allowing you to palpate properly simplest thing is that because the bladder would already be filled up right you can just put an abdominal probe over that and you can identify if the bladder is filled up or not you know and you will come to know if it is a distended bladder or not is it mandatory to do a ultrasound say if i don't have access to ultrasound then what to do just put a urethral catheter on palpation if you find something on palpation and if you think that you know there is some distension bowel sounds are present just pass a urethral catheter simple k19 and if in case urine is draining then you have to measure the amount of urine draining correct no if the amount of urine draining is more than 150 cc basically that is an indication of bladder distension practically in a post surgical situation many a times actually if the patient is complaining of something like this and if genuinely the bladder is distended you will have 700 800 cc of uh, urine coming out no normally so if you don't have access to ultrasound then this is the simplest of the simplest of the things you know you can just pass a k19 lubricated one and you can just me measure the amount of uh, urine which you have voided out so that will itself give you a simple enough idea to this situation so should we just put a k19 in this lady or should we uh, put a proper regular foley catheter no no see i mean once you put a k19 say sometime it can be due to the spasm of anesthesia that is the most common thing second it can be also due to pelvic pain that the bladder muscles have undergone spasm correct no in any of these situations in any of these situations if in case after one two attempts of putting k19 the urine is not coming out then rather than doing repeated catheterization like that it is better to put a foley catheter and allow the catheter to stay there for around 3 to 4 days okay let the bladder be compressed by that time rest of the surgical pain and edema settles down very nicely no so once the rest of the surgical pain and edema settles down very nicely then when you remove the catheter and give the patient a trial to pass urine usually 80 to 90% of them will pass urine after that Can the case patient be admitted with the catheter or can be sent home go home catheter and patient going home is nothing no it will keep on draining and the catheter has a hook so they can just tie the hook to their pant or whatever and they can walk around the house do all activities no problem Okay, so we can send the patient home. Yeah, 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 absolutely.
Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Hmm. And how long to keep the catheter? Four, five days, seven days? How long? See, standard is three to four days. Correct. After that, you can attempt clamping, declamping in your hospital. Okay. When you attempt clamping, declamping on clamping, if the patient's bladder is full and she is feeling like passing urine, you remove the catheter. Okay. You remove the catheter starting if she is able to pass a small stream of urine, that is more than enough. You know, the tone will come back and the patient can easily go home and the catheter can be removed. But we have seen people, right, uh, where we have put the catheter for six to eight weeks also. Because remember, practically in post-operative, you know, I'll just give you an example. See, many a times we think or we always want to postulate that if there is a post-operative bladder retention, I mean urine retention, then that is due to something, you have caused some nerve damage in the surgery, basically. Okay, so I'll give you an example. See, when you do ureteric reimplantation, you cut the ureter. Correct, no? And you are re-implanting the ureter at a completely new site onto the bladder. And in majority of these situations, parametrium is completely gone. Matlab, inferior hypogastric plexus is gone totally. Correct. Those patients, we are keeping the catheter for three weeks. And after three weeks, they are voiding normally, no? So, okay, so uh, when we are going to keep it for three weeks and all that, should it be a regular catheter, a regular police catheter, or should we put in a we, silicone we catheter? Put a silicone. Or we put a silicone catheter, okay, but then silicone catheter maximum for three to four weeks. The regular Foley's catheter, what happens is you now sometimes it catches that biofilm. Any which ways, you know, once you catheterize a patient within three to four days, there will be some amount of flakes in the urine due to bacterial colonization, mandatory. Okay, so if in case something has to be going on for really long term, then it is always better to do intermittent catheterization. But all these things are not required in gynecology predominantly, okay. And remember one thing, nobody knows why the bladder muscle loses its tone. Nobody knows. Okay, we have had these experiences in the past where you have done urodynamic studies also after 6 weeks, 8 weeks, whatever. Okay, 10-10 urologists the patient will consult because the patient is very stressed about these things. And everybody is going to give you the same thing. Everybody is going to tell the same thing that look, everything has been tried. The bladder tone will come back when it has to come back. Okay, it has got nothing to do with neuroprexia. It has got nothing to do with nerve damage. It has got nothing to do because the nerve control is from S2, S3, no? So, unless you are doing sciatic nerve plexus endometriosis and all these types of things, nothing really helps, okay? But to all these patients in whom you are keeping a catheter, at least this is what we follow. We give syrup of sital and along with that, we give urotone. 25 mg, you can give three times a day. Sometimes you can also give it four times a day. And along with that, you give Urimax. Urimax is basically an alpha blocker. Okay. That is 0 0.4 mg, which is available once in a day. That is more than enough. I mean, three to four weeks of this, five weeks, six weeks of this is really more than enough. If the bladder still does not regain its tone, then better is this to do a urodynamic study. Get your investigations done on urodynamic study. And if the urodynamic study is suggestive of a hypocontractile detrusor, basically, then again, you have to ask the patient to do intermittent catheterization after that. And I will tell you, we have two patients like this, uh, you know, now more than three, three and a half years post surgeries for endometriosis and both are on intermittent self catheterization that bladder tone has never come back to them. Absolutely never come back post-surgery. Everything else is fine. Bladder tone has not come back. It's just that we don't know why. That is because of the excessive uh, damage to the hypogastric nerve? Absolutely no correlation, sir. Because hypogastric plexus is going in a different direction. Even if you cut both the hypogastric plexus, let's assume, you know, you just, just cut both the hypogastric plexus. Okay. Then also nothing will happen, sir. Bladder tone will come back if it has to come back. No. Yeah, okay. I agree on this. Sir. I think uh, we have done around 250 cases in Bangalore till now. So among that, only one patient, I think, uh, ended up uh, having bladder retony and doing self-catheterization. Though yeah. it was more about uh, the vaginal nodule and posterior compartment endometriosis and not much of uh, bladder endometriosis where, uh, as uh, just he discussed, that hypogastric nerve and all that. Uh, but we have done far worse cases than that but their bladder tone is perfectly fine but one of these uh, cases no, no, we in don't Bangalore know. we have done such complicated boari flaps 
and yeah. all of them are passing urine like you know nothing has happened to the blood yes happened yeah so true. it's it's simply it's it's so tough to handle this as a doctor because yeah. the patient is going to be desperate to look out for an answer as to why did this happen to me and frankly Correct. there is no answer in science which is available for this this can happen to anybody yeah this can happen to cesarean section this can happen to endometriosis i have seen this happen to even like co ovary surgery is where nothing has happened to the bladder this can happen to patients where you do appendectomy this can happen to anybody practically it is just that we don't know why it happens and when it happens we... up yeah should we take a consent of the patient before any planned surgery that she might have a problem yeah, it's a part of all procedure specific consents okay it is a part of all procedure specific consents for any pelvic surgery that since you are going to operate in the pelvis we don't really know which nerve what will happen okay it is a 10 page consent sir these 10 page consents are also going to include the smallest of the things right right from hematoma formation to vault hematoma to death on table but uh, that is predominantly for medical legal safety right see what typically happens is at least what we do is when something something like this happens we will send it to doctor alap he is our urologist right what will our urologist do he is going to give you the same medication which we have going to give because we have also learned it from them only correct now if the patient chooses to go to two more five more 10 more 20 more urologists understanding if they go to 20 more urologists the urological textbook also mentions the same thing that the answer is we don't know right so if the answer is we don't know then it sometimes it can backfire because the patient will be like oh you never told this to me you know i i wanted to know if i am going to have urine retention but it is impossible to predict impossible to predict this but this is what we have to learn because if something like this happens 99% of the patients will go home nothing will happen that 1% of the patient who is going to suffer the onus will come on you no that oh you operated and that is why now there is urine retention so it is tough for the patient to take it is tough for the doctor to treat you know because there is no science to this any role of urine routine urine culture see when urine culture is there and if there is bacteria urine infection is a bladder irritant there you have repeated frequent urination correct so despite having bacterial colonization if somebody is not experiencing frequent urination that itself is an indicator of hypo uh, contractility of the detrusor right yeah so yeah. the tone is not proper so the tone is not proper nobody knows why that's the problem you know is there any neurological treatment available for this not not that i know of i you know somebody had come to me very recently they had come to me with this bluetooth device okay to be implanted into the uh, into the sciatic nerve plexus so they were like hey, you know first we will do a cm guided marking that you know the bluetooth device is going into the sciatic forearm and that can be done on cm so we experimented in one patient like that okay we said okay we we'll see and if the bluetooth is allowing bladder sensation to come that is basically in this neurological bladders you know where there is no bladder sensation because of spinal injury directly okay if that is happening and if something like that happens then we can do a cathode i mean this uh, you know the cathode which comes with the implant we can implant that into the sciatic plexus so they wanted me to do it laparoscopically but uh, the in that patient that bluetooth thing only did not work so then they were like hey, you we can't try this otherwise some people are trying this that you can do a laparoscopic sciatic dissection and implant a device okay onto the sciatic plexus and you can control it with bluetooth so every 4 hours if you press the button no from your mobile phone app it will stimulate the bladder and you will have to pass urine instead of doing intermittent self catheterization okay for intermittent self catheterization what catheter do we use our regular k90, k90 only standard k19 lox ka jelly in fact i'll tell you if you teach intermittent catheterization to a patient in 4 days they will bet, become better than all nurses at intermittent catheterization and it is very comfortable for them because you have to catheterize them only 3 or 4 times in a day and they will catheterize themselves 3 or 4 times in a day and they are very particular about that and uh, there is no interference their routine life goes on and you know the only thing is the only unfortunate thing is instead of passing the urine they have to catheterize themselves mm. and it has the least chance of infection 
Intermittent catheterization has the least risk of infection. The highest risk of infection is Foley's catheter. Second highest risk is suprapubic catheter. And uh, intermittent is the least risk in females. Huh? Inter okay. With the intermittent catheter, does she need to use a new K90 every time or she can just wash it with soap and water and use it? What do we advise? See, I think, sir, the K19 is costing 29 rupees. Okay. So, people prefer to buy what I know, two, three people whom I am in touch with. Okay. They are my past patients. They have bought a stock of four, 400 catheters and kept it at home. Every time it happens, they just open a new one. 100 rupees a day is their cost of intermittent catheterization, is what they tell me, you know. Perfect. Perfect. Fine. So, I think we've covered everything which is there for retention of urine. So basically, just summarizing, first we do an ultrasound to see your bladder is full, put a Foley catheter or a K90 catheter, see if she's passing urine on her own. If not, we put a catheter and send her home, do a bladder training with uh, intermittent clamping and declamping. That usually gets the tone. If not, then we start with tablets like Eurotone and Urimax. Uh, better is also to show a Eurosurgeon as well just to be medically legally safe. SOS, uh, Eurodynamic Studies. And if nothing works, then the patient has to be taught to do a intermittent self-catheterization. Correct. Yeah, yeah, correct, sir. Perfect, perfect. Right, super. Chalo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shibha, ma'am. Thank think, you, sir. Uh, Thank you. That was a great session. Thank you. Bye, Jay. Bye, sir.